Before we start today's episode, I'd like to pay tribute to a young talking fan who sadly lost his life. His name was Ben Oliver. I'm sure me, Dom, Chris, and the rest of the Talkie Talk team um, are obviously very sad to hear what has happened at such a young age of 15. Uh, on behalf of his friend George, who has set up a GoFundMe page, which will be in the description of this video, which we've been so uh, generous to, they've uh, raise money towards the funeral his family the memorial plaque and memorial flag at Torquay as well people such as even Jamie Reid the man himself has donated uh, as we record there was a 500 pound goal and that's currently 2615 which I'm sure will be very much appreciated uh, I'll just read what George has said he said sadly one of our own Ben Oliver sadly lost his life um, he was a great guy loved by many Myself and many other Talkie fans would like to get a plaque and flag in Ben's memory. He was a talk, loyal Talkie fan who travelled home and away on the Talkie Supporters Club. And all of us at Talkie Talk would like to say we're very sorry to hear the news and the description is below. Thank you for listening. Hello and welcome to the second episode of this season of Talkie Talk. Uh, I'm joined by Chris. Even though. I'm joined by Dom. Hello guys, you're right. And we're here to discuss the first uh, game of the Talkie season. It was nil-nil against Oldham. I wasn't there. I was on holiday and I had sunstroke. So you don't need to know the details of that because it wasn't very pleasant. But what I can do is listen to you two. And I have other points as well from Tom, who sometimes joins us as well about the game. But Chris, what are your overall opinions on the game? Oh, I think it, I think it draws probably a good result for us. Um, just disappointed we didn't score in the first 15 minutes, really. We came out like a, you know, like a train, um, hit the bar early. Goodish opposite. It was on the turn. It was a hard... But it, it, it was a good hit. And, you know, on, on another day, it bounces down and in. And other days, it doesn't. And uh, Goodwin had that chance. He had a one-on-one. -on -one and we, you know, we pressed. We were lively. We were in their face. And if we could have scored in that first 15 minutes, we'd make all the difference. But they came back into it, as you would expect. Um, Halster made one sharp save. And then Omar cleared one off the line after that. Um, to be honest, second half, not a lot happened. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they, they had more of the territory, more of the play. Probably looked more like scoring. But they only had kind of snapshots kind of from the edge of the box. There was one in particular that looked like it was kind of, just, he just hit it from the edge of the box and you imagined it was going to go in the corner, but kind of faded wide. But I, I mean, I think a draw was probably, I mean, they probably would feel they had more of a case that we should have won it than probably than, than we did. But Gary said after the game, didn't he, that they had more chances than us. And I think the overall feeling is, for me, it was a good point. But I think there were concerns around how we didn't really look like scoring. Yeah. Which sounds a obvious, but after that first 15, 20 minutes, there wasn't, we didn't look like we were going to play through them, which I guess is, you know, the, what Gary wants to do. And then, of course, there's the obvious concerns with the squad, which I guess we'll come on to. Mm. I mean, I, th I think the first 15 minutes were your typical home team, first game of the season, mm. plenty of enthusiasm. You know, we're going to boss it, hold them thinking, right, just hold in, keep it level, I suppose. But um, Goodwin was lively, wasn't he? He really showed a few things. I was, uh, impressed. I was impressed by him pre season. Mm. Nice and strong, holds it up well, got a nice turn yeah. about him as well. There's he won a lot in the air as well, didn't he? Oh, he's a big chap, isn't he? Yeah, he did. But I, I think him and Andrews looked, the signs were him and Andrews were going to link up quite well, and they did yeah. for that first 15, 20 minutes. But as soon as Andrews had to limp off, it kind mm. of lost, our attacking play lost its kind of its, its pattern and zest a bit, didn't it, really? Mm. I think the trouble with Andrews is he's just not quite ready to start, as he is a sub at the moment. So to start him, He's been carrying, yeah. he's been carrying injuries, hasn't he? Was it a dead leg, someone said, or was it just more of a muscular injury? Was it a hip, wasn't it? Hip injury? Was it, it was, was yeah. I, I think Gary said after the game, because he kind of the ball got played through as a, one of probably the best move we had. I think mm. McGavin slipped the ball in and it was just slightly over hit. So it was one where he went to him and the keeper kind of got there at the same time. And I they think Gary said he, to each other, didn't they? Yeah, I think he said it was a knee in the hip. So hopefully it's just a kind of an impact because that thing hurts, yeah. doesn't it? But yeah. hopefully it'll settle down in a few days and it won't be anything too major. Good. Yeah. The trouble are... is when you haven't played competitively for a while, those sort of things catch up yeah. on you, don't you? When you when you're fit and raring to go, you could probably shake them off. But it's difficult. Yeah. It's, we haven't got any other strikers to call to apart from <coughs> Olaf, who we'll probably move on to in a little bit, I, I guess. Yeah, I, okay. I haven't heard the most positive news about mm -hmm. like the strike force. Ozzy Jarvis injured as well. No, I don't yeah. have any insight. Does anyone have insight what how bad that injury is or 
Is it? No. No, he's just strapping on his knee for a few it, weeks. He looks, I just hope it's not going to be one of these players like a Nelson or, I mean, that's why it's a scenario or anything where, mm. because there like, was some talk he needed surgery. I don't know how yeah. true that is, but yeah. Um, there was talk. I mean, a little bit of cliche there, but, but the bigger the bigger guys generally take a bit longer to get over injuries, don't you? If you get a bit of a knock yeah. when you're a big chap because like he, he looks is. so but... crucial in pre-season. I absolutely yeah. love them. Just his winning in the air, his pace, and just his sort of work ethic. We, I really think after he went off, Oldham just became very comfortable. They just yeah. grew into the game, pushed up a bit, and they they just they were just very comfortable keeping them quite up mm. front and started to create some chances. So pleased to know, yeah. That's what Tom says as well. <laughs> so yeah. if he was there, it'd be a great review. Um, yeah, I mean, Oldham have got some good defenders. They've got Hogan at the they back. They sound like a typical John Sheridan team, one. to be honest, yeah. what I've heard. Yeah. yeah, strong at the back, built from there. They didn't have a lot up front, thankfully, for us. But I mean, the- No, I think they were a typical Sheridan team, weren't they? I don't think they'll concede many. Hogan had a strong game at the back, didn't he? They had a, yeah. you know, they had a strong defensive unit. But I think, again, did they, I mean, they, didn't, they didn't try and play through us, I didn't think, particularly... It was all going to be a second ball scrap one that dropped in the box. There's a few bits and balls being hunted yeah. around, wasn't there, around the yeah. area, see what can happen. So. Yeah, and so. two or three times they nearly did kind of get a second ball knocked down and somebody just spank it in from the edge of the box, was kind of how they were going to score, wasn't it? And that kind of long diagonal kind of trying to play off the shoulder of the, of the main striker. I think, but, one, I think yeah. one thing I said to Sam was that our defence just played a little too far back for my liking and we just gave yeah. them a bit too much space. Um, when you've got slower, doesn't mean they're worse, slow but slower players. defenders at the back, that's yeah. going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but Especially Omar just looked a bit nervy on Saturday. I don't yeah, know why. Um, he was, he was kind of half was clear in things, wasn't he, Chris? He, he the just wasn't quite was a bit shaky. Yeah. Apart from Moxie, who everyone's seen, uh, raving over. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, there was I a, yeah, I, I didn't get. I didn't they didn't quite, have I didn't a terrible up. game, but I'm just saying that they didn't push up enough yeah, to push I mean, the rest of the team forward. I suppose that was a trouble. I guess. I mean, I, I've seen quite a lot of you know, not criticism, probably going a little bit far, but kind of concern how the defence played. But I mean, I suppose looking at it, you know, the reality is, is it was a clean sheet. Moxie was yeah. outstanding, man yeah. of the match by a, by a mile. Cool, calm, yeah. couple of vital interceptions, and just did what he did. Really, um, I thought Marshall again. Marshall's taking a bit of stick, but again, I thought mm. he was big, strong, fought with him in the air, won some good headers. Uh, but you know, and he maybe on the floor a couple of times. He's a bit he was shaky, trying to keep the ball back. on the floor, I think, because there was a lot of yeah. pinned balls long, long towards the strikers, wasn't it? And uh, it just kept on coming back for a time. Um, so they yeah. had to work on a bit of comfort. Bit of composure. I, I that, wasn't, but... yeah, I wasn't at that game, but I have been at preseason games, and I worry that with this uh, three-five-two, that it's we're missing the mid- central midfield too much. Kind of feels like, oh, we've got centre backs, let's find the strikers in the channels. But we've got some really good like players in midfield. We've got McGalvin, Evans is really capable. Um, I need sales more of all of them, but and uh, there's a few good ball winners. Also got Laps, we've got Hanson as well. So I do worry we're going to bypass and be a bit one-dimensional. Just based on preseason games and what I've had, like I think I think the problem on Saturday as well is, of course, that what that three-five-two formation you know relies on. Mm. It means you can defend wider defensively because you've got three yeah. centre backs, but yeah. it also kind of attacking wise, it relies on your wing backs yeah. getting you forward get and getting. Up, you, and I, I, just, I don't think five. we did really. Yeah. I mean, Crow got forward a couple of times and put in one good cross, one awful cross. Um, but I can't off the top of my head. I can't think of one situation where Wyatt. Who I thought was good, got his foot in defensively, was good. Mm. I can't well, more of a defender, of... isn't he? He looks more of yeah. a left back than a left wing back for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't, happy, happy I mean, at the back, but not going forward. Yeah. Yeah. But then I, but of course the problem is if you're not if you haven't got that going forward, I think the three midfield players, the only comment I would make on the midfield is, is I don't know that was Hansen's best position. He was sat kind of deeper of the three. And I don't know, I think he's probably got more to his game than that. He kind of didn't mm. look that comfortable. I he's mean, a Evans, very slim chap, Chris, isn't he? He's like a, he's like a, as tall as Ace, about that half the size. Yeah, he is. But I get like again. He's, too, he's, he's a kid, isn't he? I guess ultimately, but I mean, yeah, it, he looks like so, a good Hanson. It will take a bit of time to settle. I think. I think he's clearly not mm. been totally fit, has he, in pre-season? But I like the look of him. He looks like a good footballer. He looks like a good but, athletic box to box rather than a deep line. Yeah. Kind of so I, when everyone's fit, I don't know. He'd play there in truth. Um, but I thought McGavin did what you thought he would do. He looked good again. Mm. We didn't get those three midfield on the ball enough. Yeah. Evans in the first half, you didn't really notice. Mm. And then again, um, Nathaniel George in the second half had a couple of moments where he picked the ball up and he thought, right, go. And it just kind of <laughs> didn't quite happen. So mm. whether it's the formation, it's... whether it's the personnel, whether it's nerves, it didn't yeah, quite happen, I th- did it? 
I think he'll stick with the formation because he's, he's he's keeping oh, that going. Season. I think yeah. it's I think a lot of it is the cohesion between players. Yeah. When you learn each other's game, you take one I, touch pass, don't you? And players think, move and know which way each other's yeah. going. When you haven't got that, it, everything's a bit slow. And when I you're a bit nervous, a when you're yeah. a bit nervous in this formation, as you two have said, that you will just become a flat back five. The full backs mm. go, or the wing backs go, oh, I'm actually just going to be a flat back five. And then you're use, losing a lot of that attacking outlet, apart from just mm. pinging balls diagonally and hoping the striker's going to get in behind. Uh, I also don't think of, there was a lot of ponderous play in the second mm. half on there, Chris. As you said, not a lot happened for about 25, no. 30 minutes. No. Was and really I think as well, there were. I think Crow was shot. The last 20 minutes, Crow was shot. After about 10 minutes of the second half, he turned when we had a goal kick and kind of grabbed at his thigh really quite straight away. And you thought, oh no, kind of grabbed it in a way that kind of went, ah. And he kind of, so he spent the next, much of the next five, six minutes stretching whenever the ball wasn't in play. And, and towards the end, when um, Omar was down and when, when he was having his, his head looked at and he was sat down stretching and twisting and bending. And I guess I don't know how fit he was. And it looked like he was it's really just, struggling towards the end. I don't... I it's, know. it's slightly worrying, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, only my, in the first game. My, my point is, at the end of the day, like... I, I've, I, to be honest, I was quite annoyed. I was quite annoyed for a few reasons on Saturday, mainly because I was ill. But I was quite annoyed at the sort of there's a quite a bit of negativity, which is the point of football. But far too much. It was far yeah. too much for a brand new team. Um, yeah. Who like I've seen people write the team off after one game, but I'm going to be negative. But it does worry me a bit, not just with like Gary Johnson's team, just football in general. How because it happens in the Premier League, but like how we have so many injuries in pre-season yeah. and I will always think of Liam Davies on the Talking Talkie pod another very good talkie at, uh, news outlet when he said there's times when because we get pushed so hard and you know Johnson wants teams fits but we would be on to our reserve on the Saturday match day like as in we put it all out in the week and we're just uh. just totally knackered by the time the game comes around um, and Gary's and, way it's high intensity isn't it yeah, and it's and, like, great I, when it works and I can think of other teams, obviously, in the Premier League, you can get away with it more. But Leicester are very similar. Obviously, where I'm originally from, so I have links to Leicester a bit. And Brendan Rodgers are very similar. The Leicester get so many muscle injuries all the time. Oh. As soon as a player comes back, they get injured again. And oh. they probably have it in other places as well. Uh, many other teams uh, will have it. But So it's not abnormal, think, but it's just too it, much. I think it probably is, is. I think the training is probably part of it. Again, if you, know, mm. if you look at a team like Liverpool, you look at the yeah. three main midfielders, Fabinho, Henderson, Thiago. Mm. If you look at they all have a history in the last two or three years, hmm. muscle injuries, Thiago, exactly. and they'll pull up happened again. Yeah. And that's got, but that again, but that's probably, they probably train a little bit differently, of course, because they have so many matches. But that's so a lot, what they do is recovery and whatever. They've got more recovery that. and more shares yeah, and diets and that. But I, and Talky won't have that because they don't get paid enough and the cub doesn't have enough. So it's even more dangerous. They're also. St- they're established footballers as yeah. well at Liverpool. I mean, that yeah. talkie, this lot of if it's really bad at that level, proper imagine, imagine what it'd be like down at our level, I guess is the point. So, mm. yeah, but I, I, but I mean, the injuries, I guess they are kind of what they are. Asa they are looked of it, okay yeah. when he came on. Lapsley, who knows, because he played the week before. Jarvis has clearly got an issue. Andrews hopefully won't be long. I don't know if Evans was injured or not. I don't get the impression he was. Mm. Um, it's Crow quite the process, struggling. but when you when you've only got 21, 22 players, unfortunately, it's going to leave us very short. Uh, so you, yeah, yeah, you I mean, got to be careful. I mean, you could tell when, I, when Omar bones, walked, it, almost. You could tell when Omar walked past the pop side. I mean, he he had a he had a physio on both arms, kind of guiding mm. him. I mean, he didn't he didn't know where I mean, he you was. can't do anything about that. Game. Yeah, yeah. Well, he said he, it, it was. I have to say, the referee was bizarre. You had four people booked for shirt pulling, but yet. That was a strong tackle. I don't, that was a little bit stronger than a head challenge. He came kind of came through the back of him, kind of quite hard. Whether it was an he was arm going or what, for I don't the ball know. Though, wasn't he, Chris? Yeah, he was, but it looked quite army, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. I, it's just one of those things, isn't it? But again, and that kind of stuff happens when you're low on numbers, isn't it? But I mean, you know, I mean, if that is concussion, which I, it must be, because he didn't know what day of the week it was. I mean, that's him out for next week, isn't it? As well, um, mm-hmm. under the concussion protocol. So how do you deal with that? So, I can imagine two loans coming in this week, can't we? I, think I feel like we need another centre back. Yeah. If, if we knew that anyway, in truth. Yeah, we needed it anyway. Even yeah. if it, you know, like if if it's all like a, if there's a player in a squad which they know is actually potentially long term, I'm praying I know of them. But even like Jarvis, for example, where it's just nothing. I hope it's just muscle a few weeks. Um, because yeah. surely it can't be. Then you have to get another one there. 
I'll say so. Uh-huh. Just, let's talk about the strikers actually, because it's one of Tom's points. Do we have enough goals? Because uh, it's, and I'm not basing it off what we've seen so far. I cannot believe that not just talky fans, football fans across the world, to, to space things off one game. Um, think of the amount of times like up the road, Exeter used to lose their first game 5 0, and everyone, hey, and then they'd be fine. Um, but like, um, so uh, we've got we've got the Loney for Stoke, good win. He looks very useful. Really like the look of him. Hopefully, you can get the goals. Andrews, if you base it on this time in um, Aldershot, I'm so excited because he scored what was the equivalent of a 20 goal season striker. Um, he has had a groin injury. We knew that. I reckon there's goals in him. But then you get Jarvis, who, where's he gone? What's the thing there? And then we've got Olaf. I've heard a lot of stuff about Olaf. One of you want to say something? <laughs> Where do I start with Olaf? I mean, he came on, he ran, he ran again, but the centre backs just sort of gobbled him up, didn't they? Mm. He, did, he doesn't have the pace, the skill to to do, do you, a lot. That's the trouble. He's base, just not up to this kind of level, unfortunately. Do you base a fourth choice striker, to be honest, on one game where he's completely out of his depth. And I know that he's never really played for us before. I know realistically. Mm. Is he probably going to be the standard right now of Conference South? I think the trouble is, you yes, call him fourth but, choice, but you, yeah, we tend to have to them. play our fourth choice. Yeah, choices. no, you're right. Yeah. We don't want to have to keep them around, do we? Just because to keep up numbers. And, it, and, and if you listen, people can play. So. And if this is what Gary Johnson said afterwards, you know, we need, what was it, 16 players who are standard, first team standard, and we don't currently have that. Bit of a weird comment when he has assembled this squad, but I guess what he means is that. We've got a few players who I need to be a bit better and we need a few more because we've got a lot of injuries. Honestly, we all want him to do well, Chris, don't we? But mm. I, I don't, I've got, not really got anything else to say. I mean, I, as as no, I mean, I, I, yeah. I, 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 I partly feel sorry for him because he's clearly, you know, you'd never doubt his, you know, his desire and his commitment to what he was trying to do. Mm-hmm. But you just, you just feel a bit sorry for him. He was, he was a yard off the pace. He's not mm-hmm. strong enough. Dom said he's not quick enough. Um, and that's nothing we didn't already know. Mm-hmm. So it kind of just feels a bit like, you know, I mean, I, whether Gary privately would regret that comment he made about whilst I'm here, he's here. Because in reality, why is he still here? Because, mm-hmm. you know, he's no closer to cracking the first team now than he was two or three years ago. But equally... And it was a little bit embarrassing for him to go off as well, wasn't it? I mean, well, he do his confidence even, yeah. when, he, no when he came on, I didn't think he'd see the game out just because of how it... Because if we were winning, you'd probably withdraw him to bring a, a midfielder on. And what we ended up doing was withdrawing him to bring a midfielder on and then put McGavin further forward. So you put a midfield player in his position who's more likely to get a goal than he is. Mm. And of course, when they went down, <laughs> it's a brutal game. When they went down to 10 day. men, they actually got better and we got worse, Chris. Well, <laughs> so. well it was only five, we only had five minutes, didn't we? Because then when Omar oh, went say off, that I have to time, say, man. well, yeah. I have to say, I thought that the concussion rule would have applied to all leagues. Like, I only assume it doesn't apply to the National League because if, if it does apply... Why was Tomlinson not allowed to come on? Mm, that's stupid, I agree. Well, I, I assumed it applied at all professional levels, but mustn't. Uh, I'm not sure. No, but, no, um, no, yeah, so we only had five time. minutes and then it was 10 all. Then we kind yeah. of retreated a bit. We'd obviously lost a centre-back. We went to four at the back. Uh, we looked on the right the side end, of it. We, we had just one attack going forward and they just couldn't go forward, could they? They're just like, no. that's it. I've had time spent here, so that was it. But, yeah, but kind of we, last... we took the nil-nil, didn't we? That's yeah. Anyone was too um, disappointed at the end of the I, game. I think the last 10 I minutes... I would have taken the nil-nil. Sat, sat nil-nil like... in some yeah. sofa in someone else's ha- Airbnb house. Yeah. So I was like, oh, it's quite happy the nil-nil. <laughs> From what everyone was saying, I was just watching the scores ready to see talking nil older than one. But, uh, you know, I can't mm. take nil. No, you get a point at the start of the season. Yeah. yeah. The only person with any urgency in the last five minutes, well, ironically, was Mark Halstead. Twice, yeah. the ball went out for yeah. goal kick. And he oh, yeah. raced to get the ball, put it down, you know, raced back to you know, get it upfield quickly. And it, it was almost like we were losing the way he was going on. But everyone else just kind of seemed a bit <laughs> apathetic and a bit kind of... Oh, well, he was game, though, Chris, wasn't he? He was running out, trying to oh. kick it quick. I'm like, no, there's nobody there. Don't kick it. Don't do it. <laughs> I want to have a special, a, a have a special game, thing for him, actually, because everyone yeah. knows what happened to Halstead last season. But yep. I've already played well at the weekend. Um, did, yeah. Obviously, yep. we were going to do another pre-season episode. Uh, Dom had a poem about Killian O'Connell um, leaving. But s- sadly, I had COVID, so we never got to read it. Um, You've all been really saved, sad. trust me. 
<laughs> our viewing. I was going to get the guitar the out and everything. We had it all planned. Uh, our so subscription would have gone through the roof that week. As but, well. Yeah, I know. I know. We have gone viral for all the wrong reasons. Um, <laughs> Anybody wants to hear it, I mean, you know. Yeah, just, let just us know. Are you in private viewing, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> and um but obviously in pre-season also that was pretty much quite a nightmare against Plymouth and everyone's like oh great and then against Exeter he was unbelievable so I think right I'm not saying anything but I'm just saying after that Exeter game he's clearly so confidence minded player probably yeah, yeah. um you know he should be better really in that sense but he is first time it's taken him a year but he proved to himself and Torquay fans that, oh, no, there is a good goalkeeper in me. I can do it in a game which is only pre-season, but it's against the other rivals, you know. We're, clearly, it was a good atmosphere. Um, uh, so that's him doing that now, and he sounded quite competent. What, yeah, what, I would, good game. Yeah. what I would say, ignoring who was in goal, you didn't yeah. notice him. Yeah. Which I think is what, which is what you, they always say about a good goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. You don't notice. He made one sharp save in the first half, yeah. then rebounded out, and Omar cleared it off, cleared the rebound off the line. Yeah. Um, I'm just other than that. I mean, what was good? They they had one corner I remember, mm-hmm. and one cross where he came out very decisively. Yeah. And took the. He wasn't under any pressure either time, admittedly. Yeah. But there was no kind of like, oh no, it's coming in the air. Oh, about it. Yeah. He was just. Poof, Mine yeah. on both occasions, and yeah. that was really that's, good. To see. That's the difference. That's the yeah. thing for me: keep calm and be decisive, and, yeah. and he could be a goalkeeper. Well, no one, one was, was no yeah. one was talking about the goalkeeper situation at the weekend. No. That, that's what I can say. The, pro- the problem, the problem he's got is he's a half mistake or a mistake yeah. away from the ceiling caving in on him again, isn't yeah. it? That's the problem yeah. he's got from a supporter perspective. Yeah. But he can he hold back. his nerve if he makes a mistake? Yeah. That that will be the secret. But we'll see, yeah. won't we? I think very yeah, much it, positive. It, game it will it will be the greatest comeback in sporting history if Holstead goes and has a good season. Honestly, like <laughs> I won't go that far. <laughs> yeah, well, I won't go that far. <laughs> but actually, I think I think the point that Matty made in the article he did last week is actually he's or he is what we've got. They've clearly yeah. made a conscious decision that they're mm. going to go with him. So actually, for, as a supporter. Yeah. As a player, as whatever you are linked with the club, we, the people have got to get behind him. So if and yeah. when and as he does make a mistake, which a National League goalkeeper will, we've got yeah. ever, you know, it's, it's no point going for him again all of a sudden. People mm. have got to stick with him because he is what we've got. Yeah. We've got love it, but the decision is clearly the house that is the yeah. number one. So yeah. if he can that, string together to some if he can string together a few good games, that people soon forget about the yeah, mistakes. And that they usually move on. Football sounds are so fickle, honestly. honestly. Like we were, if he makes like five good performance. Is we will be like, oh, he's back in McDonald's. I'm like, seriously, I reckon he probably will be a fan. He'll do that. Um, but also, and the love at number two, he looks really good as well. So I'm not really panicking with the keeper situation at the moment. I think with football fans, it's credit in the bank. And if yeah. you build up a few good performances, You're only as good as gets last you credit. Game. And then if you make one mistake, people yeah. think, well, he's got that credit. But yeah, yeah. He's, then, he's still got a little bit to prove. But I'm, oh, he's got I'm, so yeah, much to I'm prove. really happy with him on Saturday. Happy for yeah. him as well. Quite yeah. quite frankly, I think, I think we've got bigger issues than him at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Across the whole squad, we've got bigger problems than the goalkeeper that was solid and kept a clean sheet, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, and let's be honest, it's a better start than last season. Like, everything was in turmoil last yeah. season. Every position of the pitch, how stead the defence, the midfield, strikers, mm. it all looked dreadful. We've got and we've point. got one more point than we had this time last yeah. year. Halifax and Bromley are going to be two tough away games, aren't they? Yeah, we've got a tough start, yeah. Solid, uh, solid sides, but equally, they both, you know, they both got beaten at the weekend, didn't they? And so we're a tough no team. Reason. I think we'll be a tough team to yeah. beat. You know, we're talking about being shaky, but we're going to be a tough team to beat. But, uh, I don't yeah. think there's going to be a lot of game, a lot of goals in the games to start with, and we're going to have to scrap them out. No. See if we can scrap out one nils and one alls and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I heard there. that was that was the most goals on the first day of the season for 12 years in the National League or something at the weekend. So <laughs> 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 football is an entertainment business, as Gary Johnson. Apparently so. Yeah, yeah. Apparently so. Yeah, as he says, we grind out a nil-nil against Oldham with 10 man. <laughs> yes, but, uh, but let, so. Let's face it, if we had three nil-nils in the first three games, now I'd take that. You take three draws to get get the get us going and then you need because you win, you know, yeah. promotion. Well somebody, campaigns somebody, somebody said home, how many they? points how many points you need from the first ten to be in playoff contention. I was like, oh good God, I, I don't want to think about that. I just <laughs> I think did about not mean this team. season, right? My opinion, right, which makes us all the whole thing of talky talk worth not very worthwhile, but it's football. I don't, don't say this, Sam. Don't I say don't this. I don't get how people can just spend so much of their time moaning about it, especially when we actually don't look bad at all. 
when, you know, so just enjoy it at the start. All the pressure's on Wrexham, not County. Chesterfield, they have no goalkeepers because some keeper called Lucas Cobblin stamped on someone on his debut. The bizarre what, thing to do that was. What a weird bloke he's turned out to be. Like, he never did any of that for us. All he did was fall over in a 70th minute of cramp, which is probably a Gary Johnson thing anyway. Um, and then, because McDonald did it as well. And then just, just let them have the pressure. We'll enjoy it. We'll probably be around the playoffs just outside, hopefully. You know, just, just enjoy your foot. Dark horses. Dark horses. Just, just enjoy it. Enjoy the nil nil. Just, just be calm and enjoy, enjoy it. Enjoy the lump falls. <laughs> You're not a football fan for that, are you? No, I, I won't fi- be calm. He'll and be I'll... firing up next week. I just think at times people just need to calm it down a bit. I know we're an ex football league club. I know we should be in League Two, but so should about 10, 12 other teams. So just relax and enjoy it a bit is what I'm saying. But then I was in a bad mood on Saturday because I was vomiting a lot. So um, actually when the team sheet was announced, so I saw no laps here. I was like, Poof. so um, yeah. I mean, does any team replace half their squad and then start on fire the following season? No. Not tempting to do that. It is tough. It is really tough. Mm. You've got I, to keep them together. Think really. Perspective is what I'm saying. Like, even if we mm. had the same team, it's just like yeah. it's the first game of the season. New tactics, new shape, totally new players. Kieran Evans, Chris, what do you think of him so far? Because he's been pretty quiet in pre-season. He, he didn't really make much impression on Saturday, did he? No, you didn't really notice him, did you? But I get, you'd say that about the midfield in general. I mean, McGavin was probably the most kind of present of the three in terms of he was picking the ball up trying to drive, wasn't he, forward more. But Evans, you didn't really notice. He's clearly got quality. He's got a good delivery on him and he's got, you know, he's got some good corner, corner delivery. But there was somebody who was over the, the um, Bristow's bench. I don't know where you sit, Dom, who was kind of saying that Gary was getting into him, kind of almost threatening to take him off if he, if he didn't pull his finger out. And then at half time he did. So mm-hmm. whether it was an injury, whether it was... Because um, it was a like for like change, wasn't it? it? wasn't like it was to facilitate a formation change or anything. So whether Gary wasn't happy with what he saw, so hooked him, maybe I don't know. He sounded quite downbeat, well, it... Johnson, didn't he? After the game, yeah, yeah, I don't know, I'm not sure really. But, I, mean, I think more than Ga- any more than more than any player, Kieran Evans just doesn't seem to have that position sorted yet. Where are you going to play him for uh, me? I just don't know if he. Knows. Yeah, it, it's in a balance. It's either going to be like a Connor Lemon or Evans, or he's going to be a sort of similar sort of player to what we had last season, where it's like, oh, you've got ability, but you don't have that mm. to uh, you know, do it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think he's got. There's no doubt he's got ability, and he's got, you know, he's got it. He's got, you know, kind of championship level ability in terms of how we can play. But you've got to get him in there. And again, before it, it felt a little bit like we were kind of trying to fit players into a formation rather than yeah. putting players into a formation because I don't know Maybe. Evans in a narrow three is necessarily. It's a number ten though, behind. really. I'm not saying like there's a situation of Astro and Evan, but there's generally could be a thing. It happens with football where you get sent on loan to play a certain role. And then if you're just stuck in the formation, you're not getting the freedom, you're not getting what the parent club want. Word about the crowd, Chris, the older the way oh. Yeah, well, the atmosphere was great. I thought they were brilliant. They had one it, song, mainly, but it went on for days, didn't it? Yeah, I, I, I think as much as anything, I think what was good about that is for all of our, what do we have, eight debutants, I think? Um, I think what that would have said kind of is you're stood in the tunnel hmm. and you're kind of out and you're warming up and stuff and you're listening to that. The lads like, I don't know, I guess people like Evans and, and Marshall and McGavin, this is, they must have thought, poof, crikey, this is it. Mm. Wow, yeah. this matters. It's football league I, I, at the end know, of the day, isn't with it? With no disrespect. To, yeah, with no disrespect to Kings Lynn, but I, you wouldn't have got that kind of atmosphere at Kings Lynn very often last year, I doubt, wouldn't McGavin. So you must have stood there and thought, geez, you know, this is, this is, this matters. This is, these yeah, people yeah. want this. Yeah. That must be good to hear early on. Of course, it won't be like that on a Tuesday night in November necessarily, but yeah. I think as, as Gary said after the game, what it shows you is what? Nearly 3,000 talkie fans there. So as we've always known, mm. a successful side. Yeah. can get 3,000 comfortably on, yeah. you know, as an average. But it's about drawing those week in, week out, isn't it? And unfortunately, games like that in their quality probably won't bring people back. But kind of, you know, the atmosphere and the occasion may well have made people... That was a great atmosphere, wasn't it? That was good it was afternoon. Good, it was a nice feeling of people getting back together, wasn't there, after a month or two and seeing each other. Yeah, I loved just, it. Just enjoy being there. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you missed yeah. that, Sam. So. Yeah, no, I'll be there for... What's the next? Boreham Wood. Boring word, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, not quite Can't the wait. same away following, is it? Can't Can't be about 50, but yeah. <laughs> and then a nick of 1 0, and then, yeah, footboys back. <laughs> yeah. I saw the drummer afterwards from Oldham. I think they broke their drum during the match. So That, that was a shame. Too much. Yeah. Thanks for joining me, you two. I'll see you two again. Uh, we'll be Cheers, back guys. next week. Uh, I think I think we're all, I, I'm on holiday this week, but I'll be back by the weekend. 
So we'll talk about oh, it. Oh, they don't make maintenance, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to go North Devon. Don't even go. I'm on holiday after I've got, that. I've gone Dorset and then North Devon. So, you know, a few days away. Um, and, I'm going to have to start recruiting, Chris. Yeah. Oh, no, no, we need him. He, he's the clever one. Yeah, I mean, if there's any Photoshop people that fancy helping with that stuff, then be, be my guest. Hanging out these two kids. Yeah, yeah we, we can't we can't pull it together like he can. No, no, no. You're right, Sam. You stay. You're, we're true. far more dispendable. Yeah, I love you, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, thanks for joining me. You two, pleasure as always. We managed to get a lot of talk out of a nil nil, uh, which was not a surprise with us three. Um, maybe Tom will be there next week or can join us or. If anyone is um, that self fandom fancies either writing in or even joining us, let us know if you wanted to. Halifax. Halifax. Um, did I say some end? You did. Yeah, well, one of the effects of uh, Sunstroke is you're confused. So yeah, clearly. we'll blame it on that. <laughs> if we're going towards South End, we're probably not interested because they're not yeah. playing talking. I said South End earlier as well. So you did, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. That, that's, in, that's in two or three weeks, month's time, isn't it? Early oh, September, yeah. that well, week. okay. Brilliant. Oh, I'm going to have to do a lot of fast cuts in this episode, then I? So, um, <laughs> right. So, I know why I saw it because I was looking at pictures. Oh, I don't know why I said it, to be honest. But, um, right. So, Haddy Facts next week. Enjoy that. And we'll see you next time.